I'm Rob. I'm John. And this is the Mint One Podcast. Where we talk all things NFTs and the rise of blockchain gaming. We've had guests for three weeks and it's been a crazy month in crypto. It's been a very busy month with a lot of big news topics to cover, so let's dive into them. This episode of the Mint One Podcast is brought to you by Zombie Outbreak Survival, who will become the first wax native project to drop on the Atomic Hub launch pad with their Out of This World pack drop on March the 29th. The pack contains 30 NFTs, each with an increased chance of obtaining higher rarities, making it ideal for both SOS veterans and newcomers alike. Each purchase also has the chance to be doubled completely for free. And so if you want to get a leg up on one of the Wax Blockchain's premier strategy titles, head to the Atomica Launchpad on March the 29th at 18 UTC. If you want the chance to win one of five exclusive Out of This World packs, click the link in the description below. Right, back to normal for, I don't know how long actually, um, I've been kind of enjoying having loads of, I guess every week, like you're guaranteed like an interesting chat with someone that you've never spoken to. It's, I don't know, it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's been, we've had a good bevy of guests on lately and we have uh, a few more coming up. We do. Um, couldn't get one scheduled in time for this week, but mm. we have, uh, we have several more interesting coming on. So yeah, looking forward to, um, to those interviews to come and, yeah, uh, the, the last three weeks we've had, uh, we had Burn Ghost Games. Mm-hmm. We had, uh, Bitsky, which was last week, uh, and the one in the middle was Undead Blocks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they all received really well some of our best performing episodes to date. So let's That's keep it going with this one. Yeah. Although we need a little catch up episode because we do. Crypto moves very fast and the last month has been fast moving even for crypto. Yeah. Um, so there's. So this episode is going to be a little bit um, all over the place with a load of different topics, I think. <laughs> but I mean, I have got three A4 pages of just random stuff I've written down that's happened in the last nice. month that I want to discuss. Um, where should we start? What, what, what do you want to start with? Um, it might be the driest topic to start with, but I think there's some interesting discussion around it is the whole SVB Silvergate, yeah. banks crashing, crypto dropping, yes, <laughs> all of that Craziness. malarkey. Um, so yeah, long story short, um, two of the biggest banks that were supporting, uh, crypto firms have gone bust, um, mm. Silicon Valley and Silvergate. And, uh, uh, of course, as soon as one of these big collapses happens, every NFT project rushes out to the gate to say, we have nothing to do mm. with this bank. Don't worry about it. Don't fud our NFTs. Um, but it did affect, uh, an important stable coin. Which affected a lot of people, which is yep. USDC. Um, yep. and it still is, let's just say, not very healthy. Um, I'm mm. just looking at a Financial Times article from today. Um, traders pull three billion dollars from USDC in three days. Um, which you might be the most stable, stable coin in the world, but that's not a tricky. Good look. <laughs> yeah. It, it's funny. So when it happened, when it depegged, I was on Discord with my friend who works at that. Um, he's helping build an exchange, mm. and they had a lot of money in USDC, Ouch. and it was very much a yeah. I need to go. Um, and he <laughs> vanished for a while, but it did recover its peg. Um, it's interesting. So I, I was reading. I don't want to get too into the <clears throat> like the economics because. Sure. It's just not my area. Who wants to listen to me talk about that? Like, I, I don't know anywhere near <laughs> as much as some people who have podcasts. So uh, go to listen, one, listen to one of those. But Circle, um, I think they actually did pretty well because they had diversified their cash across loads of different banks, mm. which is a very astute observation because otherwise <laughs> if they'd, they, they had a lot in Silicon Valley Bank, which is what caused the problem. They had, I think it was $3.1 billion dollars of cash in Silicon Valley Bank in the reserves. Um, and I heard, I don't know how true this is. I think it's pretty well verified that they, Thursday morning, when they heard all these rumors about Silicon Valley Bank, they tried to withdraw all of it, which is probably quite the, uh, <laughs> quite the transaction. <laughs> and by the end of play Friday, it still wasn't <coughs> processed, which isn't yeah. overly shocking. Um, no. So yes. USDC went crazy. Um, I don't know. How low did it drop? I I remember it heading below 90 cents at it, some point. I think, I, I haven't I haven't looked this up, so I don't know, but I think it hit 87 cents was the yeah, lowest it hit. That's crazy. And um, what, and another thing, I mean, this always happens. Whenever there's some sort of crisis, people make a ton of money. But 
allegedly a load of people on that Friday when it hit that bought a ton of it and then was just like, I'll just wait for it to repeg. And then I just made 10% over the weekend. Yeah, so uh, over the weekend, I had some kind of halt in um, mm. in trades, but they then assured everyone that starting the next week, um, they would uh, reacquire their peg and everything would be as normal. So yeah. <laughs> I thought everyone just rushed to buy it on Friday and cashed it on Monday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it has, it has repegged now. But I think the the bigger and more important thing to to nft audiences listening to this is the collapse of those two banks has fueled somewhat of a uh, kind of a bull sentiment in the crypto market um, i don't know if you've been on coin market cap today rob but I'm i've not seen I'm, I'm a very so- <laughs> boring man <laughs> i've not seen so much green on graphs in some time we're uh, yeah. above twenty six and a half thousand us dollars per bitcoin above 70 uh sorry not seventeen thousand. that'd be crazy and um, seventeen hundred dollars per ethereum and yeah coins up and down the uh the top 100 are posting uh very uh, very bullish numbers for the last seven days. So it's... it's I, I mean, I just need to say, I don't care how much this undermines any... The three listeners that think I might know something, it will undermine <laughs> them. But on Friday, when my mate said, oh God, it's depegged," And I was like, oh, brilliant. And then Silicon Valley Bank had gone down, Silvergate. And I was like, we're going back into the depths of winter. And, mm-hmm. and I was honestly, I was mentally preparing. I was like, right. I'm going to sell some stuff now rather than just hold it. Cause I said, I'd do it this last time and I didn't do it. I was like, I'm going to sell stuff now and then wait for it to hit really low and buy it back. And I nearly did it. And then I thought, no, you never <laughs> predict these things. Well, it's too chaotic. You just don't know. And, and then we went on, a, on like this weird bull run. And for the life of me, I've spoken to some people who are far more knowledgeable about economics, finance, the macro picture of crypto and none of them really had a very good answer for, for what it is. And the only thing I could find when I was listening to things and reading stuff is that regulators, when talking about SVB, said it wasn't crypto that was to blame. Mm. Uh, and people expected them to just pin it on crypto, as is you, you know seems to be the case in the US. Yeah. Um, and they didn't, they didn't do that. And I wonder if that contributed to it. Then again, maybe... Um, the whole uh, lack of faith in the banking system um, sometimes pushes people towards it. I, I don't know, but it, I really did not expect the bounce we've seen. There's been a few speculators and influencers in the space um, say that the this kind of bull rush um, is down to lack of faith in physical yeah. banks, and I mean, I'm not qualified enough to say whether or not that's the case. Um, but SVB but is tech-centric. It, that's why I find it confusing. Yeah, it's been... There has been a lot of news about traditional banks having um, difficulties lately. Credit Suisse has been in the news all week. Yeah, a lot. Um, we had uh, the UK budget, which wasn't crypto unfriendly, which might be a bit mm. bullish for some people in the UK. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, in general, there's this kind of distrust of banks and a lot of uh, very powerful people on the world stage coming in front of cameras to say, oh, we'll protect the banks, we'll protect these financial institutions. And by the looks of things, people not really believing them Mm. Um, and thinking, well, what alternatives are there to fiat? And it looks like crypto may be one of those. So, yeah, it's um, whether or not it is a big show that crypto as um as true decentralized finance you know an alternative to fiat and real world banking and financial institutions is is you know what is behind this bull run um yeah. i don't know but it's um it's a good day for anyone holding cryptocurrency yeah. um perhaps not so much if you're more nft heavy um the the floor prices on uh particular collections have dipped in line with the the rise in eth let's say, with some mm. some interesting secondary market prices for some collections. And I think that segues me quite nicely, I feel, into another topic I wanted to discuss, mm-hmm. which is doodles. Um, are you aware of what's going on with doodles, Rob? I know. I mean, regular listeners, and especially you, will know. And when it comes to NFT art collections, I know very, very little. So no, I don't. I have seen some of the craziness with people selling off and buying back NFTs and 
it, it's all been a bit messy, but I don't know Doodle's story specifically, so enlighten me. Sure. So Doodle's one of the most prominent um, blue chips, I would say, uh, has Pharrell Williams as their chief brand officer, um, tend to work silently and not communicate very much, which has mm. possibly fueled the situation that's occurred this week. Um, but basically, um, a somewhat moderately well-known figure in the space went into the Doodles Discord and tagged uh, Poopy, who's one of the creators, and said, please buy my Doodles, I want nothing to do with them anymore. And, you know, normally you'd forget, you'd just ignore that kind of thing. Um, but this guy is very persistent in the discord to to be nice to poopy and just kept sending message after message and eventually poopy replied with what's now become somewhat of an infamous term in the web3 space um floor it and gtfo (laughs) 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 which was immediately screenshotted and then posted everywhere um and there's a i'd say about a 50 50 split in the web3 community about people that agree with him and people that think that guy was probably right, and how dare Poopy react in this kind of way? Um, it, Why is it's one generated of the creators a... expected to buy back anything? I think he'd, I think he'd mentioned somewhere on a podcast right. that oh, if people are unhappy being okay. holders, then okay. hey, I'll yeah. buy your NFT back. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's started a lot of discussion in the space, um, particularly around what these big blue chips let's say are are doing mm. in the space right now and if you t- look at yuga labs for example that run board Ape yacht club um every single wednesday they will provide their community with an update it might mm. be the tiniest thing in the world it might be the announcement of a new play test um for for other uh what's it called other other world other other side other side that's mm. the one. Oh my well i don't know how i forgot the name of that um but anyway yeah they're, they're very consistent with their communication um yeah. whereas for, yeah. for some time people have had issues with doodles as a project um ever since they announced pharrell williams as their chief brand officer at nft nyc last year um the amount of updates has been slow from their team their communication's not been very good um they get their ceo um julian to to go on you know podcasts and twitter spaces and things but other than that communication has been slow and they, they're promising a lot but not you know, giving very vague details mm. um and once poopy said florids uh and gtfo um and he got a lot of reaction for that he decided the best way to deal with it would be to reply with a twitter thread <clears throat> so let's um dive into some of the things he said well firstly he posted um a a message to discord and then followed it up with a twitter thread so let's go with the discord message first um and he mentioned um I- i'll just read it verbatim he says we're trying to go from a startup to a leading media franchise we are no longer an quote-unquote nft project um, the more time slash money slash resources we invest in following the latest build in public trends that fuel speculation, the less we have to achieve our long term vision. We're not going to spend any resources appeasing those with financial motivations. We never have and never will. Uh, if we are going to focus energy on any group of people, it will absolutely be our most loyal collectors. That got a lot of equally ridiculous feedback <laughs> from the NFT space saying, okay. firstly, um, not communicating at all. And building in public are two very different things. Um, secondly, at the end of the day, those 10,000 people um, that poll doodles are, or should be in many people's eyes, the most important people to the brand. Um, I think those were the two most prominent arguments mm. to that. Um, and again, lots and lots of discussion. And lots and lots of feedback. So I'll move on to the Twitter, to the Twitter post here. He says, hey, just to clarify, um, so he, quoting himself here, Doodles isn't an NFT project. This is true, but what's also true is I've dedicated my career to the blockchain. I'll never abandon the pursuit of delivering the promises of this tech to the world. Doodles started as an NFT project, but we're growing into a company with the goal of becoming a leading media franchise. And we want you along every step of the way. Um, the second bit is about appeasing people with financial motivations, which I don't think is as important. Right. Um, but um, mm. very, very interesting. 
set of responses to this. One of the top replies, what about a statement for the Web2 community? Um, and, and, and someone else saying, why are you trying to appease 1 million people when you can't appease 10,000? Which is a very good response. Mm. Um, and, and I wanted to kind of take that whole poopy situation and use it to kind of frame a discussion around transparency of building in public because uh, and this is going to form part of an article on nft insider um one brand that has been revitalized and has gone through a lot of change um but is doing things in a way that the web3 community likes um is cool cats you know they did their rebrand not too long ago and i'm not just saying this because i'm a cool cats holder it's a I mean, take that as you will, but I think they've done quite a good job in the last few months of saying, hey, we're going in a new direction, but we want you guys to be aware of what we're doing. So, hey, every time we do something important, we'll have a big call, we'll get the CEO on, we'll get the whole team on, we'll explain what we're doing, we'll be transparent, we'll keep you guys in the loop, and we want to assure you that our holders are our priority. And yes, we do want to be a bigger company and do bigger things, but you guys are what's most important. For the most part, the community's been like, great, yeah, we're along for the ride. Thank you very much. Whereas Doodles has the opposite approach. They're, we want to be a big media company and, you know, they acquired an animation studio and they've got Pharrell Williams on the board. Um, but they're not communicating anything at all mm. <laughs> to their community in terms of what they're actually doing. Do you know um, what they mean by a media franchise? Um, like, you'd have to what, ask Poopy if I'm What honest. are they heading? Like, what? Because <laughs> oh, I, I only it's know the NFT projects. Yeah, it's I, not I clear. And it's uh, and there were some people saying, well, oh, if you listen to Julian's Twitter spaces, then you'd know more about what they're doing. Um, but then someone else replied, well, I shouldn't have to. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they, they should just be more upfront. <laughs> your own and, community. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. And you can see what's happened in the floor price of Doodles. I mean, it, it's been collapsing lately. I, I'm going to look very quickly on uh, a particular marketplace. I'm not going to mention which one, because at the moment you mention any NFT marketplace and people flip their lid about whether you, you pay creator royalties or not. Um, Doodles, current floor price, 3.4 ETH. God, um, I mean, I know it's, it's, it's been a lot higher. Yeah, um, start of this month, it was above five. I'm mm. pretty sure the start of the month before that, it was above six. It's been on this just trend to zero throughout uh, 2023 so far. And yeah, I think if things don't change quickly, they're in trouble. Deep trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a weird one. I don't understand what media franchise really is getting at and everyone should immediately know what they're talking about and if they don't then it, it, it just <clears throat> i find it a bit strange when um so, so people are buying a, a product essentially if you yep. buy a doodle you're buying a product and for that brand behind that product to then completely pivot in a new direction um is going to cause unrest. I don't think that's particularly surprising. If you've bought into something thinking it's one thing and then it, and then they tell you it's actually not that thing. Like it's not that he's just saying, Oh no, we've got our eyes on, on lots of things. He's saying, No, we're not an NFT project anymore. We're something bigger. I can see how that can be a little disconcerting for the holders who yeah. bought into an NFT project unambiguously. Yeah. But uh, what I, I think my main point of this dis discussion, why I brought it up is this is the kind of, a behavior you expect from rug pulls. <laughs> I'm not saying Doodles is a rug pull, mm. but if you look at any um, flashy collection that comes up with a brilliant website and a mint date and, hey, buy this, they talk about taking over the world and being this global, you know, force for blockchain gaming or collectibles or the Web3 space or whatever it is. Mm. Uh, and obviously they never live up to it. They do nothing. And the project dies over time. Um, I sincerely hope Doodles doesn't die as a project. Um, as I will say in the article that's going to come out on NFT Insider, I think they have some of the most... It's probably one of the Web3 projects with the most potential to make it big in the outside world out of any other project in Web3. But the way things are going, I, I couldn't see it lasting this year, let alone the next mm. five or ten. I hope I'm proven wrong. I hope that their acquisition of the uh, the animation studio they've bought makes sense for them. 
I hope that Pharrell has a, a wonderful impact on their operations and they've got big things coming. But I think at the start of this year, there were some skeptics. And right now, there are a lot of skeptics. And it's just getting worse. And they really need to do something to get people back on side. Yeah. And I think the thing that they need to do is the thing that Web3's built on. Just communication. Talk to your holders. Let people know what's going on. Um, I, I, I don't know if you saw, they put a doodle map um, on Twitter. It's like, hey, here's our roadmap for the next however long. And it's kind of a joke. It's just a picture with some words on it. That no, doesn't explain a roadmap. It doesn't explain any of what these things are, what they mean for the holders, what they mean for the public. It's literally just a map with some words on it. Like it says Doodle Bank, that already exists. The OG collection, of course, that already exists. The duplicator, they those opened and you could get items uh, a month ago, two months ago. Um, Doodles 2, which is something they've hyped up for ages, um, but we don't really know what it's about yet. The Genesis box, I hold two of those. I have no idea what's in them. Um, planets, they have a space doodles collection, but what do planets mean? Um, the studio, what is that? Just give me something more tangible than words that you think sound cool. <laughs> yeah, very vague. Um, so anyway, to stop me ranting on about doodles, because I could do it for ages, let's move on to something else. Um, have you heard of ordinals? Yes. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I wrote, I wrote, cause you, this is one of the only things I know you were going to bring up. Um, and I was going to ask you why you want to talk about ordinals. Um, but rather than ask you off air, I decided to just wait and ask you on air. <laughs> so, um, yes, I know about ordinals or ordinal theory. Um, what, what is, uh, so, what's uh, the crack? an ordinal is basically an NFT, but on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to get into how that is possible or the tech or who made it. All you need to know is you can now do NFTs on Bitcoin. Sure. And yeah. there's been somewhat of a a land grab or a, a rush to grab land. Um, as soon as this was possible, mm. um, anyone who were, had their eyes clued in on the space and was a creator was like, oh, I'm just going to start uploading crap basically, um, as NFTs um, right. on on Bitcoin. And some objectively bad art with no utility started selling for ridiculous amounts of money. Um, since that initial pandemonium, there's been a few projects do more tangible things with uh, Bitcoin NFTs, one of them being Yuga Labs, which has had mixed results. Uh, one of them being D Gods, who I think are moving 500, uh, I don't, don't know the exact amount, but just over 500 of their NFTs to Bitcoin. Mm. Um, and I can't make sense of it all. I, I get that it's exciting that you can now have NFTs on Bitcoin, you know, the number one cryptocurrency. Um, but a few caveats one there's a lot of detractors that think bitcoin shouldn't have anything to do with nfts and it should just stay as a financial mechanism and some people feel it's being polluted by all these nfts that are now um, attached to mm. the chain um two it's not like bitcoin has all of the support networks and mechanisms that something like ethereum does you know people aren't going to start building games on bitcoin um wrong uh, Wrong? Wrong. There's already there a Doom a... replica. Jesus. There God. is a Doom replica on Bitcoin using Ordinal Theory. Right now, Do you, you can know... play it right now in browser. Can I... I? I'm not sure whether you know this or not. Um, have the creators behind that said why they've done it? Um, not to my knowledge. So I when so I heard you could play. I saw a tweet. It was like you can play Doom on Bitcoin. I was like, oh, okay, of course you can. And then I see it's like it's a replica of original Doom. But then I was like, how is this on Bitcoin? And so mm. I'll give the simplest possible explanation for anyone who doesn't know, because I'd say most people don't. Um, it's pretty obscure. <coughs> Essentially, a Bitcoin. Most people know this part. A Bitcoin can be broken down into its smallest denomination, which is a Satoshi, and 
one Bitcoin is 100 million Satoshis. Now, Satoshis, unlike Bitcoin, um, can have information inscribed on them. Mm -hmm. um, this means that, in essence, you can create Bitcoin-based NFTs, um, though uh, ordinal theory calls them digital artifacts, which is... It sounds just like a, you know, like digital collectible. It sounds, it sounds like another one of those, but it's not really necessarily a synonym because it's kind of an artifact in that you've left it on like an imprint, um, yeah. rather than created something. But it's pretty interesting. And firstly, anyone who says, Oh, what's Bitcoin got to do with NFTs? I mean, colored coins was like the first NFTs. So sure. it, yeah. it's existed for ages and, and people just whinge a lot. Um, I kind of get the rush to it because Bitcoin is the original. It's, you know, the, it's the, the founding father of, of crypto and to have NFTs on it is kind of cool. But I think it would just be another storm in a teacup. Yeah. People rush in to buy it like, Oh my God, is this going to be the next moon? And then it, people will be like, okay, well, I mean, it's not that different really in, no. in there's no practical application that's that useful. Yeah, exactly. There's, I think it's just. It's just speculators who want their bags to go up that yeah. care about what is happening with inscriptions on Bitcoin. Um, it doesn't have practical... I mean, yes, someone inscripted the original Doom onto Bitcoin. Great. What practical <laughs> it's, use case it's does kind that of give an to anyone? It's experiment, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? And it's not, it, it's it's not even the original uh, <clears throat> Doom. It's just a similar-looking FPS. Um, I mean, it's pretty yeah, cool that someone managed to do it, but it's it's just like... Can we do this? It's like when people have put, um, like, you must know the will it run doom meme. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah like, people put doom on a pregnancy test on a smart fridge. <laughs> like, it's just, a, it's just something to do, isn't it? Just, yeah. is it interesting? Yeah. But I think for, uh, for people that care about blockchain gaming, aka us, oh, it's, mm, it's a passing unlikely. Fad. It's, unless someone can build yeah. something on top of it. I, yeah. Oh, let's not, let's not bring up the idea of layer twos on Bitcoin. Mm. That always gets done so well with the, uh, <laughs> The maxis, they love it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, to, to I, I think storm in a teacup. I think I, I I understand why Yuga and some other people have tried to claim their you know their bit of land on on the Bitcoin mm. um, network. But yeah, it's it's a flash in the pan. What it's, what struck me is in fact that people are talking about. Like they're they're kind of rushing to get to it, right? Like to yes. as as if it's mega finite. But <laughs> if there's what twenty one million, <laughs> there's twenty one million Bitcoin, and then there's a hundred million Satoshi's per Bitcoin. You really don't need that many Bitcoin. How many NFTs are there in total? I mean, there's no way Google has the answer to that. Three hundred fifty million on Atomic Hubs. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> You're looking at billions, yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah, billions. But I mean, nowhere near whatever 20... I mean, obviously you wouldn't have no. access to all... Uh, this is pointless. <laughs> but yeah. the point is, it's not that fine. Like right? like ordinals. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. I think it's kind of an interesting thing. But it's yeah, it's, I don't think it's going to yeah. be I much mean, in the grand scheme of things, at least. Yeah. Practical application, very limited. <laughs> yes. Um, um, I've got lots of bit part things to discuss yeah, you mentioned um board ape yacht club yuga labs mm -hmm. so i don't think we spoke about this this is almost a month ago now um about the dookie dash winner yes um how do you say his name is it mongrel or mongrel is it just Mon uh, i mean it's mongrel I, but with an extra I, a i wish i knew the answer to that question yeah. i don't know <laughs> kyle jackson is his real name yes um yeah. Yeah, so he sold the key he won for 1.6 million, which yes, is just, I mean, he's 18. He's a professional yeah. Fortnite player, so he's obviously, you know, this is already his career, but he's just become very rich off of uh, just yes. an innocuous browser game. Which I'm is not sure if Yuga sure. have said too much about what exactly that key No, they haven't, they haven't. Does. Um, but there's, there's going to be more, there's, I think there's a key for every one. And people are just banking. I think it's a pretty good bet. Like, if you've got a lot of money, 1.6 million for a key that's going to have some use in the future. And it is obviously rare. It's one of one. And it, and it's, it was extremely difficult to acquire. Extremely yes. difficult. 
if you think how much the apes go for, just the apes go for so much. So yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily a bad bet. You've got to have a lot of money to make that bet. And the guy who bought it has a lot of money. It was um, Adam uh, Weitzman, the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's a billionaire, so 1.6 million yeah. really is just an expensive lunch. Um, I'm not, not sure what I'm not sure what Kyle's done with that 1.6 million, but uh, he put it out for five million, didn't he? Originally, and then it's crazy. So, so the, <coughs> the news article came out that somebody bid 1.1 million. It was a Dow. I can't remember which Dow it was, and I started writing about that because I just thought it's kind of interesting. It, this is like place earn gone mad, and then <laughs> before I finished the article, Nine Gag, the website Nine Gag. Bid 1.6 million. And I was like, mm. what is happening? Why? <laughs> what is happening? I mean, they are involved in, in, in crypto a lot, but it's just so, it's just so crazy. And then he accepted a different 1.6 million, uh, offer after. I mean, just, yeah, crazy. So that, that's just, that's just one of the, uh, one of my talking points that I wanted to, to broach. It would have been, it would have been interesting to see what 9gag would have done with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know. I mean, they've that's, got, that's they've got Web3 projects. Um, the guy who founded uh, Nine Gag is certainly involved in the in the scene, but it's just uh, just, I, just seeing Nine Gag. I was like, "What on earth?" <laughs> well, hey, I, I don't know what Carl's done with his money, but you know, go buy ten bored apes, stake them for ape coin. You probably make that money back by the end of the year. Could so. do. Oh, I, I, hashtag any, not any financial advice. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that is not, yeah. high stakes yeah. advice. <laughs> yeah, but hey, there's, there's, oh God, anyone that's holding like a board ape or mutant ape at the moment and is staking it mm. for ape coin is doing quite well for themselves. So, mm. yeah, there we go. Um, I have another thing that I, I want to just passionately rant about for a moment. Go for it. Uh, did you see the tweet from Doctor Disrespect um, about the extraction thing? No. Okay, so his. Stuart, you'll know most of this. This is for everyone else's benefit because we have to remind ourselves it's not just us in a Discord room chatting away. Um, <laughs> so uh, Dr. Disrespect, super famous um, streamer and uh, FPS player, very funny guy, very tall guy, six foot seven or eight. Something yeah, crazy, crazy like that. You can't really tell mm. when he's sitting down, but apparently he's massive. Anyway, um, he is interested in Web3 and blockchain technology and has come under a ton of fire for it from normal traditional gaming. Um, but he does not care one bit. And oh, no. he started a studio called Midnight Society, which is at 12 a.m. on Twitter. And they've mm. created or are creating a um, FPS, blockchain FPS called Dead Drop with not enough Ds in the name, um, which is actually Dead Rop, which we've discussed before and it really frustrates me. But anyway, Dead Drop. Um, and he tweeted, and I'm just going to read the tweet because I copied it. Imagine trying, so it's an extraction FPS. Get <laughs> staff, try and get out without being killed. Um, can be really exciting, those games. I've played several myself. Um, mm. So it is, I think it's a good idea, especially when what you're trying to extract is NFTs. I think that's a very cool idea. And then he said, imagine trying to extract with an item you discovered worth $100,000 on the chain. Think about entertainment value as a viewer, let alone a player. A new yeah. PvP experience is beyond, upon us. The concept, concept of digital collectibles in an online game is so exciting to me especially an extraction type game people saying scam and ugh are just brain dead headline followers same people that spend a ton on skins for an annual release game same skins everyone has too okay i mean i agree with every word he just said yeah. um now obviously his following is the majority of his following is web2 gamers that are suspicious of nfts so he got just slammed for this like a hundred thousand dollars you are an idiot like what are you thinking and in this sort of beautiful poetry <laughs> the week a week later a chinese collector spends a hundred and sixty thousand dollars on a csgo skin yeah i mean it's like i'm not i'm not laying into the guy that bought that skin it was extremely rare float value was crazy you know it it, it was extremely hard to get He's got a load of money, whatever. $160,000 is a lot of money. But if he's got a lot of money, then it's not. So whatever. But the fact that something you can't even own or do anything with other than use it in a game and you can't sell it, you don't verifiably own it, your account could be banned with it on. You've got yeah. all these all these issues, all the same issues that we know um, that Web3 can help overcome. 
if people will pay 160000 for things that aren't on-chain, that you don't own, then $100,000 for an item in a game isn't unthinkable when you do own it and you can easily sell it and, and it's verifiable and transparent. And the thought of, I mean, I really agree with the viewer part. Imagine these stream, these top streamers that stream all day and they get an extremely rare one of one NFT in their game and they loot it and they know on the secondary market, they've probably got it on a second monitor looking at the secondary market and they're like, I'm on Atomic Carb, let me check the price. Oh my God, it's selling for six figures. Can you imagine the chat? The Twitch chat would be going berserk. You would oh, be shaking trying to get out of this game alive. It just be, I mean, he's, comp- he couldn't be more right. And, and I think it's, he got, yeah, he got utterly slammed for it. And then the next week, it couldn't have proved his point better. I mean, somebody who, I, I can't remember exactly how you get that skin. I think it's just out of a case that once that went for $160,000. I think you just get it out of a case. So I think it was I think it was a rare skin with rare stickers on it. Yeah. I, I've not looked into it. It's a lot of that's what it looks from the picture that I've yeah. seen. But yeah, it's yeah that dis- Doctor Disrespect tweet. I'm just looking it up now. Um, I have seen it. Uh, I just didn't recall when you first brought it up. But yeah. it has a it does have some interesting discourse in the um in the description. Um, someone brought up why this skin might be or, or why uh, an item worth a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, might be valuable, and I'm not sure I like Dr. Disrespect's reply to this. Um, mm-hmm. It was the whole, hey, this item could have a use in a completely different game that comes out seven years later. Yeah, which, I it's, mean, weak. It's, it's weak. It, it's weak. It's a weak I don't, argument I don't like that. for that. Um, you see a lot of people say that. Interoperability, when there's very little evidence that interoperability could really work. And if if you're being generous, you could say that his studio may be making more games. And it will work in future games, which I think is in the interest of studios. We're talking a long way down the line, but once yeah, sure. they've released these big games on chain, if they're a success, then the next game they release on chain ought to be interoperable with the NFTs. I think that's within, mm-hmm. that's in their interest. So if you're being generous, you could say that, but I don't think that's what he's getting at. No. And I think to, to tie this back to, to one of our guests that we had on recently, um, Grant Hasley from Undead Blocks, mm. it's, I, I I appreciate tweets like this, and I think they're important for the space. But I think everyone who reads that who might not know too much about Web three is like it, it, it's like I don't know, winning who wants to be a millionaire or something. It's not like every single player is going to get an item that's worth a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, the the reality is for most players, as Grant said, you play a game, you earn enough money to buy pizza that you eat the same day. Like, it's not going to be life changing. And I think mm. to, whilst these tweets grab headlines, and of course, he's an influencer, he wants to get in headlines. It, it's, he's probably one of the biggest influencers in the gaming space talking about uh, and actively building in Web3. And that's mm. important. I, I think to, to have this entire focus of web three be about money 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 and oh my god you can earn so much money and watch people earn so much money it darkens or blackens the view that people have of this space in general uh, yeah. where i think there's so much more to it so yeah you kind of already have to understand the value of it before you read the tweet to get the full effect of it but yeah to me i mean even it like 50 quid or something if I found an NFT that's worth 50 quid and I have to now escape with it, I think that'd give me adrenaline. Oh, like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm not... It, it's I'm, just... I'm expect- I mean, if it's worth anything, <laughs> it's like, oh, God. Like, I, I could actually make 50 quid if I, if I can just get out of here alive. It adds a bit of risk to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, and, not, yeah. I'm not saying at all that, you know, I'm... I think the concept is bad. I just think that trying... It's speaking about it in a way that's like, oh, it's attainable for anyone is probably not the way to go about it although yeah if i had an opportunity to play a video game and get an item that's going to pay my rent for the next 25 years then you can bet yeah. your ass i'm gonna play that game I, i've got so, to be honest i'm choking <laughs> if i pick up a hundred thousand dollar <laughs> nft my aim will go to shit i'll be all over the place yeah. Yeah, no, I can, I can completely, I'd be exactly the same. Um, I'd like to segue that into another game that was announced, mm. um, over the past few weeks. 
uh, coming from Nexon, uh, specifically yeah. Nexon Korea, the um, the IP holders for Maple Story. Um, I don't know if you played Maple Story back in the day, Rob. I know I did. I haven't, no, but I, I know I know about it, and I know it's I mean crazy popular, like a cult game. Oh yeah, yeah, it still has a a loyal fan base to this day, and uh, yeah, it, it's a great browser game. Um, so they have announced uh, a new game or what they're terming a web 3 universe just just mm. call it a game um called maple story universe yeah and it's um as i've just alluded to it's going to be blockchain based um very much in web 3 uh, but they're going about it in a very different way so uh it will have zero in-app purchases so no microtransactions right um, it won't have any pre-sales for heroes or skins or items or anything like that yeah and all of the nfts that can be earned through playing um that that's the only way to get nfts is to play the game game. right free to play and you'll acquire items that are nfts that you can then go on to buy sell trade as you would any other nfts and uh it's getting some interesting reaction i feel because it's a very different approach to the idea of building a Web3 game. Like, you know, we're not going to sell anything. We're not going to sell NFTs. We're not going to sell passes. We're not, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to make it free to play. You can earn NFTs as you play. And presumably, Nexon will make um, their money through the um, some fees that they take on secondary market sales and through, you know, advertising and other means. Mm. But it, I think it's it, it's had some... I've seen a LinkedIn post here shared by uh, Chris Atkaven, who's the chief gaming officer of Magic Eden. Um, and there's been a, a, some very interesting discussion from other people in the games industry in the in the comments to this, who um, are, are kind of praising this different approach and what seems like a much more player friendly approach mm. to the idea of a Web three game. You know, it doesn't appear, at least on the surface, that it's going to be, you know, predatory or, you know, going yeah. to be after people's wallets. It's, hey, you play our game, you earn things. If you want to, go sell those things to other people. We might take a little bit of a cut. Or I presume that's what's going to be the case. But, yeah, we're not going to try and steal everything from your wallet kind of idea. And yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen a game like it. I don't know if you have. No, I don't think so. What's interesting is, and I had to... I had to dig deep into this because I couldn't remember where I saw it. But last summer I saw someone say that Nexon is creating Maple Story Universe, a mm-hmm. metaverse game. And I couldn't find much on it. But Nexon's been interested in, in Web3 for a very long time. So it's not that surprising. They mm. they invested in Oasis, the um gaming centric protocol. Uh, in December or November last year. So they're, they're certainly been interested in it. And I, I mean, I like the way this sounds. I would I think right now, and this obviously evolves over time, but right now a blockchain game would be perfect for me if you either bought the game or it was free to play and they didn't sell you any NFTs, but you could sell it on the secondary market and the developer takes a cut of the sale, 10%, 15% even maybe. Sure. Perfect. Like... Who loses? <laughs> Who loses in that yeah. scenario? Uh, you, you're getting all the benefits of blockchain without these ridiculous, like, oh, buy our nine hundred dollar founder pass and you can get in one minute before everyone else. It's just, it's just disgusting. <laughs> I, I yeah. like the way they're doing it, and if they if they pull that off, I think it'll be successful. Um, yeah. And I it's mean, got, got they, a fan base, that game. Yeah, I think Nexon as a studio have a fan base, and and also Maple Story IP has its own um, mm. kind of core community. And I think I'd, I'd love to see more games go this route. Um, it's not going to work for for everybody, of course. I think Nexon are in a privileged situation where they have the runway where they can develop an entire game yeah. and then rely purely on secondary market fees. Uh, they're they're banking that their game is going to be big enough that it draws enough players in that they gather enough items and trade enough that the the fees that they take or however they get income is going to be enough for them to sustain the game. I think if they can I prove that's, that, that's possible. that that will I think if they can prove that that will work, that's huge. Yeah. And I'd love to see more games go that route. Yeah. Um and and as you said I think it will help to combat a lot of the downsides that people have with blockchain tech. And what I like about 
the way that they're going about it is it's very easy with a system like that to just not mention the word NFT at all. Mm. You could be like, hey, game's free, you can earn items, but oh, we're not, we'll uh, let you trade them with other players. Yeah. And go, you know, I, I don't know if they'll, I, I'm not sure exactly what currency they'll use to facilitate it, but they can remove the technology from that conversation. Mm as much as possible and that makes it so much easier to make it appealing to you know a a, a hardcore gaming audience I, i've had a lot of these conversations in the past two to three weeks i feel and you know i've said before how um i hate the the answer about education i don't think education solves anything i just think we need to make things easier for people yeah and it seems like maple story uh or this new maple story universal maple story n or whatever they end up calling it um, looks like it would be a perfect vector to allow for that and I'll be following it very closely I don't know when the release date is um, I might google it right now and uh, see if there is any news but uh, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't I anticipate any time soon no yeah, I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be any time soon but yeah it's, it's perfect if it's, if it's just working behind the uh, behind the scenes which is what we've we've said for over a year at this point yeah I think 2023 is going to be a year where, I mean, I don't want to be too bullish, but I I feel that we have a lot more high-quality games coming out this year, and if we can start to see games that have a, a more user-friendly approach to onboarding people from, from Web2 and traditional gamers, which at the end of the day we need to if we want the industries to grow and survive and thrive, um, then I think we're in for a good year. Mm. Um, we've we've had two events, uh, two big higher events already this year, ETH Denver and NFT Paris. Those have both gone very well. We've got NFT NYC coming up. GDC is in a few weeks' time. It'll be very interesting to see how the conversation shifts uh, throughout the rest of 2023 and see if we do start to get those first few titles that real hardcore gamers want to play. Let's stay on the gaming hype train that we have got going here. <laughs> Did you see the Pokemon thing? Yes, yeah, so they're hiring a Web3... Three... Mm, what was the it's title? Vague. It's vague. Um, <laughs> so on Greenhouse, which is a, just a recruitment website, they put up um, a role for corporate development principle, which I don't know what that means. Okay. I think just building <laughs> partnerships. But then... Uh, the base rate for the wage is like 150 to 224 thousand dollars. So it's it's a well paid job, mm. and you're basically trying to push Pokemon and build relationships and partnerships and blah blah blah. However, um, somebody spotted that in the requirements for things you need, skills you need. One was a deep knowledge and understanding of Web3, including blockchain technologies and NFTs and or the metaverse. And number two was deeply connected to a network of investors and entrepreneurs in the technology sectors above Web3 and metaverse. Um, now, before I wrote this in my article, but before the listeners shit themselves with excitement and try and apply it to get a quarter of a million a year to play Pokemon on chain... Mm -hmm. um, you also need God tier level of uh, experience in, in other fields. I mean, it is a difficult, the, the list of requirements is like two A4 pages. It is, it's crazy <laughs> um, what they want from you, but this could be massive. And it does show, um, it does show what uh, they're looking at. They're, that, that it's even on their radar is something that people have begged for a very long time. And I wrote um, kind of a medium length article, perhaps we'll link it in the show notes about this kind of thing. But I think there's a lot of different ways that this could be valuable, not only to Web3, but to, but to Pokemon itself. I think making, I mean, this is obviously conceptual, but making Pokemon NFTs could tie together their whole ecosystem. Pokemon oh, yeah. Go, the Pokemon offline games, the physical cards could have NFT counterparts. There's so much you could do with this. Um, that I, I kind of wanted to email them and be like, look, I only have two of the skills. <laughs> <You've won. laughs> I only have the Web3 skills, but uh, I've got so many ideas. Please let me bore you for six hours in a conference room because there's so much you could do with that. And 
if they announced anything, they're, they're big enough that they, they're a tastemaker. I mean, people would just be like, okay, guess I'm playing a blockchain game. <laughs> I mean, there's been plenty of speculation already amongst oh, many yeah. blockchain communities. I saw some people in the VV community writing threads about, oh my God, is Pokemon coming to VV? The answer's no. Um, mm. I will eat something. Didn't they just nice get someone quite big, though? Big. I believe so, and I believe they have connections to Pokemon, but if Pokemon end up on VV, I'll eat something like a hat or a plant or mm. something like that on uh, one of the future episodes of this podcast. I love the VV community, and if any of you... P- change my mind <laughs> rather than abuse me if you, <laughs> if you, uh, if you are part of the VV community, because it feels like... And this is, we know why this is, but if, um, <laughs> if you're affiliated with WAX in any way, the VV community just rail you at any, at any opportunity. Um, yeah, basically. So but, um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's a tricky one to understand. Um, but, but in any case, I think to have a, a company uh, as big as them publicly say, Hey, we are looking for people with Web3 experience. Yeah. I, I, I like, I, I wish they would have put in the job description needs five years Web3 experience. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's something ridiculous. Um, 12 years no, of it, Ethereum it's... coding. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to start to see a lot more of those. And it yep. comes at an interesting time when a lot of these companies in the space, because of the nature of the markets and because we've been in a in a bear for some time, mm. are starting to lose staff you know people that are i mean i know people personally that were had their own thing going on in the space and now can't do it anymore and have had to sell nfts and stop their projects and things Mm. it's cool to see these new opportunities pop up um yes that will be for one person in one company earning a lot of money Mm. but um, i hope to see that become more widespread and you know this uh, kind of lust for people with Web3 knowledge become more widespread. I think it's it's natural. We're seeing so many companies, um, whether they're consumer-facing brands or infrastructure companies or whatever it is, um, start to look at this space and see how they can apply their mm. business and their products to this uh, emerging new tech. So, yeah, yeah I guess watch the uh, watch the job boards and uh, see, see what comes up. Mm. Um, I have a few little things remaining, but I don't want the episode to go too long. Is there anything you, you know, is burning a hole in your mind that needs to be released? Um, uh, nothing huge. I think we've covered the biggest points over the last few weeks. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I'm going to do some quick fire points. Go for just it. Just random stuff I wrote down that I think is kind of interesting. Um, Alfa Romeo's Formula One team officially partnered with Everdome. Any, did you know any of this? I think it's no. Only I just feel like happened. I should, as an F1 fan, I feel like I should have known that. Yeah, but so, no. <laughs> so, like, I'm the car guy, but you're the F1 guy. Like, I, I, <laughs> I it, which is weird. But um, so I love Alfa Romeo, and yeah, their Formula One team has officially partnered with Everdome, which I'd never heard of. And I looked up, and it's like crazy UE5 metaverse that, I mean, is playing the longest of long games because very few people would look like they would be able to run it. Um, mm. This is very recent news. I think this happened today or yesterday. So mm. kind of cool. Um, have you ever heard of a game called Bitcoin Miner? I've heard of it, yes. So Bitcoin Miner, Idle Tycoon. It's um, <laughs> Idle Tycoon. Is there, <laughs> is there a worse pairing of words in the world? <laughs> um, so the, the, it's a... It's a pretty... It's just a casual mobile game, which is something we've talked about a lot in episode what. 57 with Steve Curran of Burn Ghost Games. We talked a lot about casual gaming and how it might be the window to um, blockchain adoption in gaming. And they surpassed 1 million downloads of that game across both platforms, um, iOS and Android. Mad. They've, they've got some crazy player base. Basically, you can earn Satoshis and cash them out uh, using the Zebedee wallet. And it, it's, it works. And it, it's just, just good. And it works. And a million is kind of crazy. Um also, on the note of gaming, yeah, casual gaming and mobile, uh, Jungle, a studio who make mobile games, got $6 million, which isn't that crazy in the space, but $6 million seed round from some really big hitters. Hmm. And their strategy that he put in the press release, the guy at the CEO put in the press release, is basically hoovering up mobile games and putting blockchain in them. Um which makes a lot of sense, but it's also kind of risky and crazy. I don't know. Just a weird one, that. Yeah. Um, 
talked about that. Talked about Pokemon, DGN Zoo, uh, the little meme parody of Crypto Zoo by um, Mr. Paul. Yes. The disaster that that was. Um, DGN Zoo. I don't know how much you know about it, but uh, it was, it's created by the founder of I think it's MakerDAO, and he was like, I could make this game in thirty days. So he's tried to do it, but then what he's made is actually kind of cool, and people are buying into it and all the profits it make goes to saving endangered animals. And it's got, nice. you should have a look. Um, I wrote an article on it and what's really interesting about the project is how deflationary it is. The game incentivizes you to burn your NFTs to get the money out. So it's kind of play to earn, but you have to burn the NFTs to earn you the money to get the money out. And it's essentially like, um, it's like an analogy of endangered animals being like killed for money and stuff. But it's, it's very clever how it works. And, so it, it's really, really deflationary, like the token and the NFTs. It, it's cool. Um, and it all goes to charity. So that's amazing. And then I think this is the last thing I have. Uh, yes, TSM, that's Team Solo Mid, the esports team, and Blitz App, which is owned by the same company that owns TSM, have teamed up officially with Avalanche to integrate blockchain into that platform, the Blitz App platform, and uh, some other bits and pieces. Speak your mind. It's why is it always TSM? Um, I, I know. The, so they, I, I thought I, when I wrote this, as soon as I started writing this article, I was like, TSM, why is that ringing so many bells? And then it was because they had that $210 million 10 year deal with drumroll, please, FTX. <laughs> so, Brilliant. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I hope this deal for TSM goes better than their last one. Mm. I know there's a lot of um, crypto sponsors and advertisers in, in esports at the yeah. moment, but yeah, <laughs> let's hope it works out better for TSM. Yes. Um, but I think um, that's, the, yeah, that's, that's all the, is that all the things? Yeah. That's something all the things that I'd, <coughs> something I totally forgot, but I want to touch on very quickly um, mm -hmm. is Amazon's NFT marketplace. Ah, um, yes. It's, there's not really much to talk about now other than it's happening and it's coming in spring. Yeah. Um, but they have just closed. Well, I imagine they would have had a say in the marketplace that they backed yeah. closing down earlier this week. Um, that does dibs. seem connected. <laughs> yeah. So dibs was a, um, a marketplace where you could uh, buy, sell, trade, fractionalized um, trading cards, uh, real world trading cards like baseball, Kind of, mm. uh, whatever and if you collected all the different fragments then you could then you know redeem it and have that rare baseball card or whatever delivered to yeah. you um it's built on wax amazon invested into it not too long ago uh well not too long ago i think it was several years ago i think yeah, the company in general had like 13 to 15 million in seed funding and they closed mm. their doors this week um it'll be interesting to see what amazon's nft marketplace is although yeah. it's one of those things where you we're just gonna have to kind of wait and see because Everyone thought GameStop's marketplace would change the Web3 space, and it's... I don't like it, but it's not been the game-changing... <laughs> well, the GameStop are pulling out yeah. of Web3 and crypto I mean. and NFTs, so yeah. But it's... Amazon's a very different story. To, very to GameStop. different beast. GameStop and... nearly died anyway. Yeah, um, I, I, I think yeah. Amazon have some natural ways they can make an nft marketplace work i mean mm. they already own twitch we already have nft drops happening through twitch and um, well I, I say nft drop it's in the in the twitch like rewards thing it's like yeah. hey claim your free blancos skin which yeah. of course is an nft um so it'll be interesting to see how they want to go about that and also uh just how they want to integrate NFTs into Twitch. I assume there's going to be a lot more than just, hey, earn a blank cost skin. Yeah. I would imagine they're going to do more interactions and perhaps tie those into their marketplace, but we'll wait and see. Mm, no choice. Um, but yeah, I think that's a, a pretty decent wrap up of the last month in uh in yeah and I, mean, I mean we've covered maybe five percent of what's happened in the last month <laughs> but we <laughs> yeah we hit some big topics I, I can guarantee in between the time we record this and it gets published there's going to be about five other things that are worth talking about that we've not covered but yeah there we go that's the nature of yeah. uh of web three so episode 60 mm, 60 the big not sure number. for uh for the Mint one podcast uh rob where can we find you um, you can find me at tokengamer.io um, for all the latest blockchain gaming news and 
reviews and giveaways and information and bits and pieces. Uh, then our app, which is on iOS and Android, and um, that has got a major. I saw you look at the camera and I copied. Is that what you're laughing at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never look at the camera. It's like it's like um, I just don't make eye contact with anyone. Um, but I must. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have the app on iOS and Android. And, uh, yeah, yeah, some big updates coming into that. We've, some stuff went down with notifications, which we had to fix before we could move on, but we're integrating Polygon into that and then hopefully more chains down the line. Um, so yes, that, and, and I didn't realize how many people get their blockchain gaming news from our app, but, um, recently I've had a few people tell me that that's just how they check on blockchain gaming news is the homepage of the app. So download it, leave a five star review, uh, or don't, I'm not your boss. Um, and then at, Token Gamer News on Twitter and then Token Gamer YouTube. Um, y- you can find me. John? Cool. Uh, so for the daily blockchain gaming Web3 NFT news, head to oh. nftinsider.io um, or at nftinsider underscore io on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, yeah, we've ran some interesting stories lately. Uh, the Lost Wallet. If you want to try and win a CryptoPunk, go read that article. Very fun one. Uh, and a few more exciting things in the pipelines as well. Um, for me personally, it's uh, at Hydropowered, H-Y-D-R-O-P-W-R-D, on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse, Reddit, um, many other places. Uh, Twitter's the best one. Uh, you get a daily GM if you follow me. And Yay! <laughs> and some other... And you get to see more of the intriguing things I have behind me it that does I've get, been sharing. There's more like colour and more texture every week. Well, I've been wearing black shirts for the last few weeks, so I thought I'd change it up with a green one, and yeah, we, we somehow and we both matched. Think, both are green. <laughs> Do you know what I've just noticed as well? I mean, this is Will's come off territory, but mm. this whole podcast, I've been thinking, as an ex-photographer, how have I buggered up the light in today? And now I know. <laughs> you ready? Go on. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I have the lights, I've got down lights in my ceiling and I can't have them on because they create these horrible shadows. I see. Uh, so oh, um, well. sh- can you use this as a thumbnail for me? Like, should, should I pull some, I'll uh, pull some faces. Yeah, yeah, pull some faces. What's the, what's the general, what's the general vibe of this episode? Like, uh, what do you want? Do a proper like YouTube clickbaity. Wow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I wish I hadn't signed myself up for this <laughs> I, regret it, I regret this already um, okay uh, that should I'll do, do. Yeah. <laughs> right, I do I regret all of this okay um, brilliant we wrapping uh, yeah um, it's just a last thing for me there will be some changes to NFT Insider Ch- in Ch- the next changes. Uh, next few weeks, although we'll have an article coming out about that soon. Um, mm. Exciting things. So yeah, you made yeah. it sound pretty uh, somber. <laughs> I made I made it sound very ominous. It's yeah. not ominous. It's exciting. But <laughs> you will wait until we do that uh, to to make you guys aware. But yeah, there we go. Episode sixty of the Mint One Podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of those wonderful platforms, a five star podcast review would be very much appreciated. And uh, hey, drop into our Discords at Token Gamer or at NFT Insider. Let us know what you think. Let us know who you would want us to speak to next. Uh, if you're on YouTube. Um, like, subscribe, share it around. It's always great to get uh, new fans into the pod. And yeah, similarly, look in the comments section. I'll have a, a question uh, for you guys listening. And also, just let us know who you would like us to speak to next. Or hey, it's, it, we've been doing news and interviews and things lately. Mm. Maybe you guys want us to di- deep dive on a topic or whatever the case is. Let us know in the comments. Um, yeah, there we go. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And we'll see you again next week. Mm-hmm.